Oh, dear Heavenly Father, I come before you right now as a, a humble servant who desires to do your will. I, I thank you for being a, a good, good Father who gives good gifts. And I thank you for the wonderful verse found in your word that says that you will give me the desires of my heart. And that is why I come to you today, O oh Heavenly Father. You have instructed me to go and reach all the nations with the gospel, your good news. And therefore, with my humble heart. Oh, my humble heart. I'm not asking for jets like some would. Because for those who exalt themselves, they will be humble. But for those who humble themselves, they will be exalted. Oh, Lord God. So I don't come to you for jets, but I only come to you for a brand new 2022 Jeep Wrangler. That is all I am asking, Lord, because I need to look my best for when I preach your good news. I need people to know that I have the favor of the Lord upon me. For you will never leave me. You will never forsake me, Lord. And therefore I ask, and I know I will receive in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Now before I get too far, uh, there is a lot wrong with that prayer. I, I can guarantee you that if you pray that prayer, you're not going to be getting that brand new Jeep or anything for that matter. As as we continue in our Prayer Matters series, I want us to take a closer look at James 4. Uh, this morning in our in-person session, uh, we took a, a brief moment to look at the first two verses. Uh, so verse 1 being, what causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? Now, without taking too much focus off of prayer, can I just say that probably for the first time in history, maybe since the Protestant Reformation, uh, the church has never been so divided. And at least with the Protestant Reformation, the fighting was over religious issues. Today, it's over issues of the law and whether the law has gone too far. But James is asking a question to which he's kind of answering it at the same time. Because we are passionate. We're passionate about what we believe. It doesn't matter what we believe on any given subject. We can become passionate. Therefore, we fight and we quarrel in order to get our own way. And it seems at the time of this being written, James is bothered by someone or a group of people who are being selfish. And it's in their selfishness that there's this quarreling that is beginning to happen. And in, in verse 2, he even talks about how in their selfishness, they have murdered. Now, let's not take this literally. James isn't saying that a group of people in a church, uh, they wanted their way so much that they literally killed anyone in the church that disagreed with them. Now, I'm sure that would have made quite the headlines. I'm sure it would have even made the scriptures with all the other accounts of failures that we see within those pages. Instead, James is looking back to the Sermon on the Mount. The time when Jesus was uh, preaching about murder in a way to explain 
express that it's more than actually killing. He was talking about the inward condition of the heart, and he is simply using the word as a way to startle his audience. He is trying to force the reader to come to the realization that with the bitterness that they have in their heart toward the people who disagree with them, it's the same as murder. The hatred is so strong that they might as well have murdered. And at least in this moment, there's no room for forgiveness because of the hatred that they're holding on to. And therefore it has to be their way and no other way and until everyone else gets on board, they want nothing to do with them. So I think we kind of get the point. But when James says this in verse three, you ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your own passions. Now, the word passions has also been translated as pleasures, but I'm going to even take a moment and I want you to listen to the paraphrased version in the message. Where do you think all those appalling wars and quarrelings come from? Do you think they just happen? Think again. They come about because you want your own way and fight for it deep inside yourselves. You lust for what you don't have and are willing to kill to get it. You want what isn't yours and will risk violence to get your hands on it. You wouldn't think of just asking God for it, would you? And why not? Because you know you've been asking for what you have no right to. Your spoiled children, each wanting your own way. Now, I don't normally use the message, but I like some of the language here. We're being called spoiled children. And I think to some degree, we can be. Where I disagree with the message is the question of, you wouldn't think of just asking God for it, would you? Well, I think we would. I think the exact opposite is happening. And I believe uh, that is what's happening when James wrote the scriptures. People were asking God for their selfish desires and not necessarily for a brand new Jeep, but maybe even more about the people they disagreed with. There was probably some selfish prayers about how do we get rid of these people who are fighting with me, but found within the problem one of the secrets to praying a biblical prayer. We must lay down our desires. And yes, I know David wrote in Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. It's a wonderful promise. And just like many promises of the Bible, there is something we have to do. Notice, we are to delight ourselves in the Lord and then he will give you the desires of your heart. Well, if you spend enough time with God by delighting in him, his desires begin to become your desires. You will also notice that there's a, a lot less fighting, a lot less quarreling, and at least for yourself. And that when you begin to pray, you pray many of the same things that God desires. And before you know it, God is giving you the desires of your heart because it's not a prayer out of selfishness because God is not a selfish God. Instead, your prayers are, uh, they're, they're more focused on the needs of others. We don't act like spoiled children, each wanting their own way. Instead, we act like responsible adults wanting to help and and through that God gives us the necessary resources in order to fulfill our calling so my question to you are your prayers being answered if not can I make a suggestion write down your prayers and then ask yourself when you reread them am I praying out of selfishness if you are, that might be the reason why your prayer is not being answered. 
And if it is out of selfishness, begin to ask God to change the desires of your heart. And so I leave that with you. I leave that with you as a challenge this week. Do a heart assessment and discover how selfish or how generous you are. And then take the extra steps in order to delight ourselves in the Lord.